All right, people, you know it. You want it. I drove my entire colony insane because of it. And not just because of the super fast deadline. It's the Anomaly DLC. With royalty, we played with the Broken Empire and their high-class technology. Ideology brought new traditions and challenges for our people. The Biotech DLC, their xenotypes and robots, to further enhance our experiences. But this one will bring the herd, as you and I will have to bring out everything we've learned out in the rip to survive. I got the guide you need, so sit back, relax, hit that like button and notification switch, and while you're at it, maybe check to make sure your colonists haven't made an entire herd of Muffalo Mad taming one. This is... Anomaly. So why the name? Well, anomalies are what you are going to be dealing with once you play the game with this DLC. Think of them like SCPs, and that comparison really will become obvious soon enough. If you want to start learning about anomalies and make your pawn's life miserable, do the new start. The anomaly start for a bit of a head start. You start with one anomaly right from the get-go, a ghoul. Ghouls aren't a xenotype. They are a specially reanimated corpse that can do nothing but fight. But fight they do well. With the ability to not need sleep or entertainment, not to mention a Wolverine level healing favor. You got the perfect guard. That is what I would say, if not for one very big problem. They need to feed. They eat meat. And I do mean a lot. And if they can't find meat, well now you have an angry undead monster who has trouble actually dying. The other anomaly you start with is a mysterious monument you can send your pawns to look over. This actually starts on any map, not just the DLC's version of the start. But hey, thematic stuff. This is your last chance to back out. If you don't research the monolith, you won't access the DLC's deeper stuff. However, you also won't be dealing with the intense nightmarish entities who now take a notice of you. Some still, but it's no different from the raiders, insects, or mechanoids that want you dead. So what is an anomaly? Well, it's basically an object that isn't exactly normal even for the rip. You will know you got one as after starting the research on the monolith, you get a handy little button that shows you the entities you have discovered. The more you discover, the more research you can in turn learn. Though keep in mind, in order to reach the final researches and achieve the new end game, you have to research psychic provocation, which in turn alerts them. So how do you get the research? Same way as any research, only this time you got a handy new tab since the old one was getting packed. The good news, both research types, normal and anomalous, can be done at the same time. Granted, not by the same pawn, but that goes without saying. This is good because you will be doing this for a while as the research time is actually learn this stuff is pretty long. But there are ways to speed this up if you don't mind getting dangerous. If you started with the DLC start, you should already have a holding platform and proximity detector with your starting supplies. Set these up ASAP, and in the more secure area, I recommend deep in a mountain, but a double layer stone walled room with a security door is a good, great compromise, especially early on. From here, make sure before you start your research to actually make a somewhat defendable base. At least proper walls to fall back into. This is because the moment you start all this research and so on, they will show up and they tend to show up at night mostly. I do mean it though, you got invisible stalkers walking around as an anomaly. Keep the proximity detector in key areas, especially near any way to get into the base. Otherwise, you'll end up facing RimWorld's take on the star vampire. Cool. From there, do what you want. Allow your pawns to research at their leisure, as they will not research forbidden research without approval. They'll just do whatever and waste time. So make sure you choose a research. And even if you don't do anything, anomalies will show up one way or another. Of course, if you want to speed things up research rituals and learn how to agitate them psychically to come to you, but like throwing a rock at a beehive, it's a good way to get stuck. So you made some whore angry, fought it off, and somehow actually got it alive. What now? Well, you keep it shackled on a holding platform, and from there you can do multiple things with it. You can release it on raiders, which while fun has the problem of having to recontain it, can keep it around to get a bonus for studying darker research. The more you have, the more research you get. Can use them for power. Yeah, that's right, you can actually power your base on anomalies. Well, yes, hilarious, it's also risky, as doing things to agitate them gives more of a chance of breach. You do have methods to increase the security, like making inhibitors to keep them under control, but also plenty of useful ways to harness their power. Oh, and do keep in mind they aren't completely helpless. When pawns get too close, they have a chance of getting harassed by the monsters. Don't know if they can actually hurt the pawn, but you never know. But look at, look at it move, it's creepy. 
Keep in mind, you will have to utilize these anomalies if you want access to Biofrite, a material used in the construction of a lot of things in this DLC. Getting it from entities is as simple as researching the harvesting methods, setting up the harvester on the entities on the platform, and praying to whatever religious power you choose. It doesn't decide to pull a Kool-Aid man. Well, there is a bit of method to the madness. Entities have a containment level, so weaker ones like ghouls have a smaller minimum as opposed to the gorgs. So check the levels, and don't go below the threshold or else. From here, it's just the same as usual in RimWorld, rising up, dealing with problems, and continuing the research. Because of the nature of some research tabs require knowing about certain entities in your log, you are going to be dealing with a lot of different threats. My suggestion for survival, full defense. Make as many allies as you can, and work on upping your security and weaponry. Of course, if you are like my writer, plenty of mods that are overpowered could be a good time to break out the Grimworld 40k mods when they update to 1.5. Oh, oh noob likes this too. But what is the end goal? Well, follow the quest that shows up after you activate the monolith and follow through in leveling its power up. From there, well, who knows what dark knowledges you will obtain. Similar to the end of biotech and discovering a great and powerful machine, following this path will have your pawns go into shadows and prepare either destroying themselves or everything around them through the knowledge. Or, you know, die trying since the Eldritch Horrors are coming for you. So, cults, yeah, let's be honest, we've made a lot of jokes about cults and ideology, but now the game is snapping back with their own threat. Depraved groups who follow a malignant machine mind will come to your base to cause some trouble. From the standard picking up groceries in the form of your colonists, to straight up going Uga Chaka in a ritual circle to summon Beast of Blood. Or you know, just plain simple madness wave, everyone goes insane. I don't need to tell you that if you see cultists on your lawn, kill them before they cause trouble, but hey, if you feel like it, and you're more than likely will playing this, yeah, you too can do your own rituals, similar to ideology rituals, you set up a ritual spot from the new anomaly tab. Select a ritual you know you can do, and well, have fun. Oh, and make sure you have the proper offerings, and make sure the ritual has a good chance of success. Don't want bad things to happen to your pawns, no, no. So what rituals do you have access to? Well, aside from provoking ones to trigger entity attacks for fun and profit, you got stuff like making people super happy at the cost of slower work. More work at the cost of pleasure. Raising the dead, summoning animals along with summoning a storm of blood that drives people insane. Unless they have no psychic sensitivity, of course. And, of course, my personal favorite, just whisking some random person around the world to your ritual spot, because that's hilarious, free prisoners. Of course, given all the stuff you will be dealing with, you are going to need to be well armed. Obviously, the basic weapons in RimWorld are going to help. Make sure to keep upgrading as time goes on. However, in the new research tab, there are a few things to look out for. Obviously, containment is a must. Better chance of keeping control of these SCPs while keeping your pawn safe. You can't research them without it anyways. From there, try to get Biofright harvesters up as soon as you can, as the material is needed for the future. Stuff like shaping the stuff into a clean floor that actually strengthens the room security against them. The weapons you can make are actually pretty good. The Hellcat rifle is a slightly downgraded assault rifle, but it does come with the ability to fire some flames twice before refueling. So, could be a good side grade for any pawn. As for the incinerator, yeah, it's a heavy flamer, though what's cool is that it fires in an arc going over allies, meaning you can actually use it in the group situation. Though, the secondary fire might be a debatable choice in a group fight. Of course, there is now buildable insanity weapons, like actual craftable insanity and shock lances, which do have a reduced range and you have to have line of sight. Still can be a major game changer, especially the animal pulser, which makes every animal on the map go berserk. That's always fun to do. The mutation weapons are just evil, either using the lance to turn the victim into a horrible monster, <laughs> or just using the bio mutation pulser to turn every animal on the map into a monster. Yeah, I know what I'm stockpiling for when I need to tell salesmen to get off my lawn. Then there is the dead life packs and shelves. Both allow the ability to target corpses with a strange nanite dust that, well, pulls a thriller. Certainly useful if you have a good stockpile of corpses on standby and a lot of enemies at the door. I recommend a few IEDs of these at your kill box. Just add to the fun and tell people not to haul from there. <laughs> Okay, calm down, Newbert. Then the serums. Oh yeah, got plenty to choose from. The good news, they are temporary and totally safe. Bad news, they don't exactly keep pawns happy. Though I do feel if you have enough resources to continue to make and use them, use the Mind Numb Serum to prevent a pawn's mental break or inspiration.
consideration. Then stack all the other serums that break mood so long as you don't run out of mind numb, you should be good. Right? The turret and flare pack are extremely good gear items. The turret pack can fire out a single shot turret, great for emergencies and you need some support, and the flares stun psychically sensitive creatures and reveal invisible ones. Certainly good with finding the predators. Not to mention that turret pack is really accurate. Finally, the ghouls. Yes, the ghouls are in fact a tool. Ghouls in Arabic mythology are monsters who live off the flesh of the dead. In tabletop games, they are a form of undead that those who played first edition certainly know how dangerous they are. Here, they are undead juggernauts who don't wield any weapons. That's not going to be a problem when they have the durability and healing factor of a pillar man. So how do we make one? Well, a couple of ways. Starting with one in the newest start is, well, a start. But for those who aren't doing that, the research ghoul infusion is where you want to do that. And obviously, against all Geneva Convention surgery, you turn whoever you want into a ghoul. Even in in a universe, it's considered a kinder option to use the brainwashing ritual to mind wipe them or just lobotomize them. Seriously, an evil act, but kinda worth it, cause ghouls are tough and can get even tougher if you learn the research to make ghoul enhancements. Think of them as bionics for your ghouls. Since hey, they can't wear armor, why not implant a literal spike weapon for them or perhaps a heart that lets them shoot acid? Oh, and they don't require knowing how to make bionics to make them. That's a bonus. Seriously, Seriously awesome, and the fun won't stop if you get a ghoul resurrection serums. They do what they think they do, bring the ghouls back from death. Granted, unlike the original, it does take hours to kick in, but hey, no one cares if a ghoul isn't buried, so keep it in cold storage till you need to bring them back. What people do care about is ghouls going nuts. Make sure you keep a good supply of raw meat and corpses as ghouls can only eat them. Do I recommend using them? Actually, yes. They make for good guard units. Just let them walk around and when a raid happens, body block for your range guys. They don't feel pain, quickly heal up, and later can be brought back no problem. Unless you are in a situation where raw meat is hard to come by, it's also not hard to keep them happy. Plus, I know in a few short weeks we will get mods to let ghouls work or at the very least use guns. <laughs> so what is left to talk about? Well, I want to talk about some of the weird things you can experience in this DLC and some of the ways to handle it. First up, the flesh pit. Always a chance for great and dangerous pits to suddenly form on your map. From here, you need to prepare an expedition in order to bring down the cabins. Yeah, this is not gonna be easy. It's like moving to another map, but completely underground. The good news, you have access to more resources like stone and metal, and heck, even a few other goodies left behind. The bad news, there is a lot of dangerous flesh monsters hiding amongst the fleshy walls. Ooh. My recommendation, bring fire. Lots of it. They don't like fire. Not a lot of organisms do, to be honest. Honest. Second, have an escape plan ready. The moment you find the dreadmeld which holds the whole thing together, you better run to the entrance and get out of there before the whole pit collapses. The good news, it's half a day, but if you are being chased, every second counts. The other way to meet the flesh that hates is to get a distress signal. A simple quest, someone calls you begging for help. Before it cuts out, if you heed the call, be warned, bring lots of firepower as the base has been overrun. How much you clear out is up to you, but know that plenty of loot could be left behind since the flesh digests organics, not inorganics, or you can burn it to the ground. But be warned, you might be unlucky enough to deal with the heart, and that requires a bit of work involving staying on the base, making a camp, and researching those you killed so that you can find a permanent solution to the heart's destruction. So you know the random wanderer event, they do show up at times and vary on their use, but early on, if you get a strange wanderer walking onto the map, maybe hold on recruiting them. See now, there is the creep join events. No, seriously, that's what the dev mode says it is. What is this? A chance for a strange and backstoryless individual wanting to join. This is the risk. Sometimes you get a really good person who early on will make the difference, even has a chance for them to come with some unique but strange ability. The other chance, well, ever see John Carpenter's The Thing? Yeah, that's right. If you let someone mysterious into your base, you might be letting 
letting in a monster. One who slowly assimilates your colony. There are ways to notice them. Metal flesh sometimes left on the ground. Yeah, at this point, lock down, analyze the flesh, and maybe lock up some suspicious pawns. Keep in mind, if the entity known as Metal Hole figures out you're onto it, well, again, have you seen the thing? It'll burst out and fight back. So do you take the risk or work on keeping people you know you can trust? Just like the gold cube. Ah, the golden cube. A nice device that certainly won't cause any problems. Heck, you might get it in along with a useful item, since someone is offloading it. I'm sure pawns getting more and more attached to it isn't a problem. Not like they will go insane if they stray too far from it and eventually think everyone around them wants it. Yep, the precious is a wonderful item that causes no problems. Trust me. Just like that strange corpse you might also obtain one way or another. Sure, it looks like one of your colonists, but hey, if you study it, you might figure out how to stop death via a ritual. That never caused problems, right? Yeah, I could go on. This DLC is clearly taking a lot of inspiration from things like the Void Faction and the Rim of Madness stuff. Clearly feels like the universe is a dangerous place. Heck, makes me wonder what else is in the universe of Rimworld. Hopefully something less horrifying. Personally, I just know one thing. If it bleeds, it can die. If it doesn't, then we use more gun. And if that don't work, I don't know. Anti-grain warheads. More useful than those things. Other than that, I'd like to thank all the Patreons that make videos like this possible, and Lydian for providing us all a copy of the game so we could make this video. We're going to be diving super deep into this DLC, so if you want more info like this, quick and fast, make sure you subscribe.